Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today I'm outside to test precision landing on the return to home function with the brand new DJI Air 2S. Now we've had a lot of questions this week from viewers asking about return to home in general. And if you're flying a DJI drone today, you probably know everything there is to know about return to home. But we have a lot of new flyers that watch the channel and we have some people that watch the channel that are thinking of getting into the hobby. And return to home is one of those mysterious features that DJI builds into their drones that's really interesting and I think incredibly sophisticated. So I thought, it's a beautiful day today, and I'll take any excuse to get outside and start flying. And I thought, while I'm flying, why don't I test return to home and the precision landing aspects of it on the brand new Air 2S, and I'll explain how return to home works. So if you're a DJI flyer today, you can skip this part, and you can see exactly how accurate it is. But if you're curious about it and don't quite understand what it is, return to home is a magical safety feature built into DJI drones that essentially watches all of the critical systems inside the drone when you're flying. So it's checking things like battery levels, so if you don't pay attention to the battery and you fly too far away, it's going to know that it only has enough energy to get it back, and it's going to actually take over control of the drone, turn around in the air, spin around and come back to the home point and then land where it took off. It also monitors transmission. So there are settings inside the DJI Fly app where you can decide what happens when you lose the signal. You can set it to hover, you can set it to descend, or you can set it to return to home. My suggestion is have it return to home. And that way, if you lose connection with the drone, for whatever reason, the drone at that point sort of takes over, spins to face home, flies home, and lands pretty much where it took off. Now, you can also trigger return to home, and that's a great feature because if you're flying, say you're flying in an area like this where you're way down field there, and you kind of have your eye on the drone, and you look down at your controller, and you look back up, and you've lost sight of it. Now you're panicking. Take a breath and then hit the return to home key, actually hold it down for a couple of seconds, the drone will respond to that and say, okay, Rick lost sight of me, maybe I better fly back and land where I took off, and it'll actually come back home. So it's sort of a, it's like a dog whistle to have it come back and land where it took off, which is a brilliant feature. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated because you may be thinking, how does it know where it took off? Well, the beautiful part is when it first starts at the landing point and hovers a little bit, it locks in its GPS coordination. So it knows exactly where it is in 3D space when it takes off, and that's what it uses primarily to find its way back home. So it'll memorize those location and then fly back to that location. The problem is GPS is pretty sloppy. It's fairly accurate, but it's a couple of feet off. So if you're trying to land on a tiny little 75 centimeter landing mat like that, it could be a tricky thing. So in addition to that, precision landing takes it a step further. And a drone like the Air 2S, when it first takes off, it looks down at the ground below it and it snaps a picture of the ground. So it's much more accurate when it comes back and lands because it not only has the GPS coordination to come back and get in the general direction, but as it's starting to descend, it's looking below it. It flips the camera down to look below it to match up exactly what the landing point looked like when it took off. So it's actually really brilliant. And I'm gonna test that now. Now, two things to keep in mind. There are a couple of settings inside the Fly app that you need to be aware of. The first one is you can decide what happens when you lose a transmission. Do you want it to hover? Do you want it to descend? Both of those are bad. Or do you want it to return to home? So set it to return to home. The other really important thing is you get to determine what the return to home height is. They give you a lot of latitude of how high it's gonna be when it elevates to that height to actually turn to come back home. My recommendation is wherever you are, like for example here, there's not a lot to run into. I'm in the middle of a farm here. There's not a lot of tall trees and it's really windy today. So I don't wanna send it up to 300 feet because it's gonna be way off course when it's trying to land. So I've set it for 65 feet today, but typically I'll set it to 100, 200 feet if it's not too windy out. And that way I'm sure that it's gonna come back and it's gonna clear any obstacles. But make sure you set that because if you don't and it's too low and it comes back, depending on what the crash avoidance built into the product is, it may actually stay there and not get past these trees on the way home and that can be a little frustrating so anyway i've got it set up now what i'm going to do is let it hover i'm going to auto take off using the feature on here and i'm going to give it a couple of seconds to find its home point to set its gps lock its gps coordination in and then i'm going to flip the camera down to give it every advantage i can to look below it to look at that landing zone then i'll send it downfield a couple hundred feet i'll hit the return to home button and hopefully it'll come back and land almost exactly where it took off all right let's see what's going on here let's see so i'll launch it here All right, I'm gonna use the auto launch function just to give it every advantage possible. All right, it'll take off and should hover a little bit. Now I'm gonna flick, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this. I'm gonna flip the camera down. I'm gonna bring it up a little higher and center it over the mat. And let me take the side collision off. I don't fly with a lot of crash avoidance normally. All right, so let me take it up just a tiny bit higher so I can find that mat. All right, so I'm recording it now and it actually sees the mat below it. So let me send the camera forward and then we'll send the drone downfield. I'm only gonna go about 100 feet or so, because again, if it works far enough out, 
you know, it'll work uh, 15,000, 1,500 feet. Don't go 15,000 feet. Let me put it up a little bit. All right, so I'm about uh, 250 feet out, maybe 30 feet in the air. And now I'm gonna hit the return to home button. And again, if you get into a situation where you've lost sight of the drone or you're panicking for some reason, this button is your friend. So hold the button for a couple of seconds. Hear that beep? The drone's responding. It's now elevating to 65 feet. It's turning to face me and it's racing back at a clip. So it's heading right back to the home point. All right, so it's on its way back. Come on, buddy. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You've got an autonomous robot in the air trying to find its home point. This is amazing stuff. This is like space age stuff. All right, so now it's coming over top of the landing point and it's slowing down. Okay, it stopped. Now it's hard for me to tell exactly how close it is to the takeoff point, but it sure looks pretty close. All right, now what it's doing is it's rotating back in the same direction it was facing when it took off because the picture is facing that direction and it needs to match up that picture. All right, so it's happy. It's facing downfield and now it's starting to descend. Here's where it gets interesting. All right, let me get out of the way. I don't want to trigger any of the sensors, so I'll stand back here. Coming down. Okay, it's a little bit off that direction. Oh, this is not going to be close. Not going to be close. Come on, buddy. Get over this way. Get over this way. All right, it stopped. It stopped. It's making an adjustment. Oh, this is so cool. It's right over the mat. This is unbelievable. All right, so it's coming down, making another adjustment. Boom, it's right on the H. That is unbelievable. It landed right on the H. All right, so if I'm being, if I'm being honest, it's off by three inches, but what do you care? For me, just getting it back to the area where I took off is enough because then I can control it when it's in this area, but to have it land on a mat, literally within inches of where it took off, is just an amazing piece of technology as far as I'm concerned. So you can imagine if you're in kind of a sketchy environment, you've only got a clearing that you gotta land in or you're on a boat and you know the boat's not moving, of course, it's anchored someplace, it's gonna land pretty much where it took off. And that's exactly what precision landing is designed to do. So does it have precision landing on return to home? absolutely does. Another major benefit of the Air 2S. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, drop those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I'm out flying like crazy, so there's going to be a lot of clips coming on the Air 2S and comparisons with other drones. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button down there because, again, I've got a ton more content coming. I've got giveaways going, and you want to join the Drone Valley family, so hit the button and join the family. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, <laughs> happy flying.